In this chapter we're going to refine the shape of our bricks to make them look like made of stone by utilizing noise and VDB techniques. So basically to add detail to the bricks um, what I want to do is um, use a trick with volume modeling. So basically we're going to create two shapes one with noise one without and we're going to find the difference between them to get sort of this bolty soft stone look and to do that I want to loop through each one of these bricks. So first of all we'll create our for each loop. So we'll use a for each um, connected piece again. Let's pop that in here. Let's just turn the uh, bottom node on and uh, I'm just going to turn on multi-thread when compiled and I'm just going to stick it into a compiled block straight away because uh, there'll be a lot of bricks and this might get slow so we'll just pop that over the top, pop this into the bottom and there we go, we're good to go. We're not going to have uh, more than one input coming in, so this should be nice and easy. And then I'm going to add my stuff in between. Now I'm going to select this for each end, and I'm going to turn on single pass, so we can just see what's happening with one brick before we process all, in fact, 386 of them, as you can see there. What I'm going to do is click on this little up arrow here, this little triangle, which will make this view big, and then I'm going to tap P, uh, which will give me a little floating parameter pane, which you can resize at the side here. This will just give us a little bit more real estate to work with, a little bit easier to work with, I think. So um, the first thing I want to do is, um, with my little box here, is bevel it. So let's do a, uh, a bevel, a poly bevel. Let's just pop that in. Oh, there we go. Let's leave that result on. So in my poly bevel, let's just give that a small bevel, maybe something like that, 0.14, and then we'll give it some uh, division so it's nice and rounded, because I want my um, stones to look old and worn or stony, so we'll give it a bit of a rounded edge to begin with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a volume, so let's do VDB uh, from polygons, and this will just turn that into... Uh, a volume. Let's drop the resolution here to 0 0.02. Again, we can hardwire these numbers in because um, this isn't going to change. The user's not going to change these things. I'm just going to move those over to the side here. So this is kind of the base shape of my brick. Now what I want to do is create a noisy version of this to take away from here to create all the dents in the side, but I want it to retain this shape. I don't want it to get any bigger than this. So um, let's create the noisy version first. So um, I'm going to hit tab and type subdivide. So we plug our box in here. Um, if we look at the, uh, oh, we can't see that yet. Let's just plug that in. Uh, we're not going to see that at the end, are we? Let me just plug that into the end directly so you can see what's going on. There we go. Because um, I basically want to create a lot of divisions on this. Let's put this to a depth of four, so there's a lot of points. Uh, but it's lost its shape. So let's put a high crease weight, something like four in there, uh, maybe three or something, which will um, give us give us some nice points to work with there. I'm then go uh, I wanted to form this in a minute using the normal, so I'm going to create a normal node to create some normal normals that I can use. Let's set this to points because we're going to use a point vop. We want the uh, normal set to points, so we know which way the surface faces in or outwards. And then I'm going to use a uh, basically a point vop to add some noise to these points. So we'll hit tab and type point and create and then vop to create a point vop. So a point vop will allow us to uh, manipulate the points individually. Uh, so if we dive inside, this is vops, we can add some noise here. So I'm going to displace these points along the normal. So if you hit tab and type displace along normal, you'll get this node here which will push the points along the normal for you. So I'm going to plug P into P, N into N, and then the output position, once it's been displaced, into P here. And we want to displace it by a certain amount, and for that I'm going to use some noise. So if you hit tab and type anti, you can bring in some anti-alias noise. We need to look up the position for P, because it's a 3D noise, not UVs. And uh, we get this uh, one-dimensional noise outwards, and that will be our mount. As soon as we do that, we'll see we get some nice crunchiness here. Now, um, on the AA noise here, if you right click, you can go to VEX VOP options and choose Create Input Parameters. 
This will create some little input parameters for each one of these settings of the noise, which means if we go up one and select the point VOP and scroll to the bottom of the parameter pane, we can actually control the noise here. We've just made these parameters based on that noise. So uh, the settings I want to put in is, first of all, let's bring the amplitude right down. So 0 0.04, something maybe like that. Let's increase the frequency a lot. And look, if we increase the frequency, we can see there's some wobbles going on there. That's what I want, just slightly wobbly like this. That's a nice amplitude. In fact, I'm going to leave it at that. That's quite nice. That's what I wanted to see. Excellent. So we've created a wobbly version. And again, we want to, uh, let's make some real estate here. Let's drag those down. Again, we want to turn this into a, a VDB from polygons. Now, I want it to be the same resolution as this node here. So instead of using the chat expression to link all the parameters together, what we can actually do is right click on this node and we can go to actions. It doesn't want to show up. We can go right click actions and we can choose create a reference copy. If you do that, you'll see your reference copy is the same node, but it's created a chat expression for every single parameter for you. So that these two will always be identical. I'm just going to drag that into this branch. So I can control its resolution from over here. And I know that both branches are always going to be the same. So we've got a voxelized version of that. If I plug in the other one, we have a non-noisy voxelized, uh, non voxelized version. But they're both volumes at the minute. And uh, there's some really nice VDB tools that we can use for this. Let's do VDB combine. Because this is the secret to the trick. Let's plug our both VDBs in and let's see the result. So the VDB combine is, um, can do some funky stuff. If we go to the uh, operation here, we don't want to just copy one to the other. What we want to do is we want to find the intersection where these two are different. As soon as we do that, if I turn on my uh, look, at, if I look at my, um, we can't look at the poly bevel, can we? As soon as we do that, you'll see we get our wobbly brick there. And if we look at the uh, one of the original bricks, you'll see he stays within the exact shape of the original brick there, which is what we wanted. But this is a volume. Um, we don't really want a volume there. What we want to do is convert it. So if you do convert VDB, we can convert the VDB not to another volume, but to some polygons. And there we go. And you've got some nice settings like adaptivity, so you can make it more efficient. It's only got polygons where the detail needs to be. Let's put a bit of ad adaptivity on there. If I just turn off the wireframe, you can see we've got a nice thing there. It doesn't look great because um, we need to recalculate the normals. So let's just add a normal node just to recalculate the normals on that mesh, which will make it look a bit better. And uh, now we've got some bricks actually. What I'm going to do is hit UV um, unwrap. And uh, what we'll do is we'll pop a UV unwrap here into the loop. So we'll basically UV each brick as we go as well. well let's why not why not UV them? So um, there we go. So to check that's working, we can do a, a UV quick shade. If you hit tab and type UV quick shade, and you can see that you've um, we've UV'd up the uh, brick there. Now all that remains to be done is to select this for each end and turn off single pass. Let's see. Now we've got a nice noisy brick. Let's look at that before the um, before the uh, UV quick shade there. So let's select this and turn off the single pass, and we'll let it do its thing and apply that noise to all of our bricks. So this will take a, a second or two, as you can see, but it'll be much quicker because we've got it going through the loop there, the compile block. And look, if we pop out, there we go. We have some nice stone-looking bricks based on our template there. And as you saw, it's procedure. If I change the height of the uh, the um, roof or something, remember how we did that? Then um, I don't want to do it because it's quite slow. Where's my roof? There we go. So if we hide the, uh, change the template of the roof, you'll see everything will update as it tries to redraw the bricks again. So I'll give it a second or two to jump in there. I've got quite a slow machine and I'm doing all the screening, all the uh, live um, broadcasting as well, the recording. So there we go. We'll give that a second and there you go. It all updates. So let me just undo, put that back to the value it should be, which is one. 
obviously if I'm pulling that up I need to generate more bricks with the copy node there there we go so yeah on a more on a faster computer that will be quicker but um, this section creates um, a very nice look of our bricks there so the last thing I want to earn um, if we turn on the quick shade actually you'll see everything's nicely UV'd um, all the bricks are actually UV'd the same because uh, of the nature of where we put the UV unwrap if I actually pull that out of there I'll have to wait for it all to calculate again we could actually UV unwrap it at the end of the process here if you look in UV space you'll see you get very very tiny let's bring down the grid spacing let's make the grid spacing tall so we can see the pieces a bit bigger you'll see it's separated every brick out uh, which might not be what you want or if you were to stick that into the loop then each brick will pretty much get the same UVs we could put some kind of randomizer in there or something but um, it's up to you which way you want to UV it but it's a good way to think of uh, always about the UVing as you go along so I want to do some spring cleaning now I've finished with my bricks if I middle click we've got some interesting attributes but I want to create some more which will help the pipeline later so I'm going to hit tab and type assemble so what this will do this will give us a uh, a, a name attribute uh, which will help later on in the pipeline Houdini uses the name attribute to tell which are connected pieces of geometry or which are separate pieces so here we don't want to call it piece the output prefix let's call this bricks alright so um, we now have if I right click and go into the spreadsheet you'll see we have a name attribute and you'll see brick, all the primitives in brick 0, brick 1 and so on until brick 392 the next thing I want to do is hit tab and type group and uh, you'll notice on the information here we don't have any groups we've lost them through the pipeline but here I just want to create some groups at the end and uh, I'm going to call this group bricks I like to put my gr groups in uppercase so if we look now they're all in a group called bricks so I can treat those separately and let's just create a null at the end so we know where the end of this pipeline is we'll call this bricks out So there we go, we've finished modeling our, um, let's call these low res bricks out. So we've finished modeling our stone house. So the next bit I want to do is, um, oh, where's my null gone? Let's call that bricks out. So the next bit I want to do is to um, actually build in some nice windows and frames that fit those holes. So as you can imagine, uh, keeping on with the procedural theme, I'm going to build those off the templates that we already have up here. In this chapter we're going to procedurally make our door and window frames from the templates that we made previously and we're going to make the panes of glass as well.